I'll be like Mary and pour my oil out. It's all that I have left. You're worthy of it all. I'll be like Mary and pour what cost me out. It's all I have left. But you're worthy of it all.
Hey there, Converge Nation. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us for today's broadcast. Uh, we just recently rebranded, so we're calling this Converge at Home instead of Converge Online because we really feel Converge at Home uh, conveys this idea of community and connection uh, beyond the four walls of Converge Church. Uh, we're in week three of our Christmas series uh, that we've titled This Christmas, and we're really leaning in to this principle of the power of the spoken word. Remember Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12 reminds us that God watches over his word on our lips to perform it, and we also uh, emphasize the fact that our words frame our world. We learned that from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. So we're encouraging you, we're encouraging you to determine and define the kind of Christmas you're going to have with the words that you speak, the declarations that you make concerning this Christmas and the Christmas you desire to have in your own life personally and with people you love and those connected to you. Before we dive into the word this morning, let me say my mocha princess is ready to go. Uh, she did the lion's share of the teaching week one, and then she threw it to me in week two, and uh, and I did the, the heavy lifting. Listen, this week, this girl is back with a vengeance, and she's got a word in season that's going to minister life to us, and uh, I'm really excited just to be along for the ride, right? So I'm your sidekick today. I'm the Robin to your Batman. Yes. Your Wonder Woman, and I'm, I don't know. By the way, it's going to be good. <laughs> I was about to make something up. It's going to be good this morning. Before we dive into the word, I just want to give you a quick update on our generosity campaign mm -hmm. uh, this month. Uh, just uh, uh, you guys have been phenomenal. You have shown up strong. And uh, so right off the bat, we just want to say, listen, in two hours, in two hours, 257 pairs of new and gently used shoes were donated, were collected for Power of Glory Ministries. Listen, they'll be sent to Liberia to serve uh, 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 families in need uh, this Christmas. And uh, so thank you for showing up strong. You guys always, always, man, exceed our expectations. And then uh, uh, just yesterday, uh, you guys were at uh, Hope's Door, New Beginnings. You guys were dropping off supplies, household cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers, uh, hand soap, uh, pillows, blankets. And then you guys also went online to Hope's Doors Amazon wish list and, and bought items that will be shipped directly uh, to Hope's Door uh, to minister to families who have been impacted and victimized by domestic violence. Guys, thank you so much. Thirdly and finally, we want to say thanks to everyone who gave to our Giving Tuesday campaign, whether you did it uh, directly uh, through our mobile app or our website, or you gave through Facebook, and those funds are being matched. We just don't know how much. I think it's going to be about 45 days before we know how much of those donated funds will be matched by Facebook, or if you gave by Cash App. Thank you guys for being a part of making a difference in the lives of people in need this Christmas season and really living out, right, uh, what Jesus modeled in John chapter 3 and verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave. And it's one of our core values here at Converge Church, that we lead and we live with a generous disposition, an open hand, not a clenched fist. Now, let me tell you this. Let me just say this to you. I want to encourage you with this promise from Psalm 91 to everybody, everybody who participated. And listen, everybody, not just in this December giving initiative, but also, man, if you've been a part of what God has been doing here at Converged Church through your financial gifts, we want to say thank you. And we just want to encourage you with this promise, this promise from Psalm 91. Sorry, Psalm 41. I say this promise, but it's actually these promises, right? So, uh, Psalm 41, beginning at verse number one. This is from the New King James translation. It says, blessed is he who considers the poor, mm -hmm. right? Who considers the plight and the condition of the poor. The scripture says you're blessed because you stopped long enough to acknowledge their need. Notice these promises because you stopped to consider the poor. Number one, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Listen, there is a promise of deliverance in your time of trouble, in your time of need, because you have considered the poor. Number two, the Lord will preserve and keep him 
alive. What a fitting promise to receive and believe in this season of COVID-19 in the midst of a global pandemic. We have this promise that because we have considered the poor that God will preserve and keep us alive. Number three, he will be blessed on the earth. Listen, that means everything you set your hands to is blessed of God. He will cause the work of your hands to prosper, to be fruitful, and to multiply, all because you considered the poor. Number four, you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Glory to God. That means when people conspire against you, their plans will not prosper. God will bring them to naught. He will nullify it and no weapon formed against you. Listen to me, will prosper because you have considered the poor. Here's the next promise. Verse three, the Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sickbed. You mean that God will revive someone who is broken and, and, and hurting in their physical body with an infirmity or sickness because they considered the poor? Absolutely. Right here in this passage, God says, because Converge Church, you have considered the poor in this season, I will preserve and keep you alive. I will deliver you from your enemies. I will raise you up from your bed of affliction, and I will deliver you from the will, the plan, the plots, the conspiracies of your enemies. Glory to God. So thank you again, Converge, for your generosity for partnering with us. We're about to dive into the word and I'm about to turn this thing over to my mocha princess, my ride or die, my Bonnie to my Clyde, my girlfriend. Come on, somebody, let's pray and we'll dive into the word together. Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for all that you will minister to us today. Lord, just as Job said, I have esteemed your word above my necessary bread. Father, we acknowledge this morning the necessity of your word, how desperately we need your word. You said in Matthew 4 and 4 that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes. So Lord, we cling to every word that is spoken this morning. Let it be food and nourishment to our soul. We trust you for that now. Holy Spirit, teach us, illuminate our understanding as only you can, so that we would be doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Pastor amen. Wendy, it is all yours. Well, that was so good. We could have gone home with that. That <laughs> I got is a, little a beautiful bit of, promise. A little excited. From, yeah, those promises from Psalm 41. Mm. Well, greetings, my people. We're so glad to be with you again this morning, and we're going to dive right in. Now, I know we've been talking over the last uh, two weeks. This is our third week in the series, This Christmas. Uh, about framing our world with our words. Mm, good. And for me, the way I process um, and think, I'm thinking, okay, in order for my words to be in line, I've got to have my focus in line. Mm. And so this week, uh, we are going to talk about words, but I began to think about presence. Mm. My birthday was just a few weeks ago and I was just showered down with gifts. Mm. Now it's Christmas time and I feel like, oh my goodness, I've already been, uh, it, Christmas has already come for me. Mm. Oh, we're thinking about our kids and our family and everything. And it brought me to the scripture and where in past years I've thought, oh, we're giving gifts to one another. I've kind of felt like, uh, Christmas was almost like this. Christmas was Jesus' birthday. Mm. We were invited to the birthday party. Right. But instead of giving gifts to the birthday person, we were giving gifts to each other. Mm. I used that analogy with my kids one time. I said, it is not your birthday on Christmas. <laughs> Nobody comes to your birthday parties and gives gifts to each other and right. just says, happy birthday, Nia, happy birthday, Levi. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they aren't, they, we really do bless them for their birthday right. and we have taught them. We, we bless them for Christmas as well, but we've taught them that Christmas is Jesus's birthday. Mm -hmm. Well, I am practicing what I preach in the thought <laughs> process. I am thinking, Amen. okay, I have given, mm -hmm. I, I gave with, um, 
the the shoes hearts for soul for liberia i was at hope store yesterday and i've given giving is a godly principle you don't have to be a believer to give but giving goes right along with uh, the heart of God. It does. You already mentioned John three sixteen. It mm. says, "For God so loved the world that He gave." Yeah. So as I've um, been shifting my thinking, maturity, maturing in the Lord, I thought, well, giving isn't so bad. That is God instituted it, it and so we're gonna really look at giving um, gifts this Christmas. Mm. But this is something that I asked myself, and now I ask you. This Christmas, mm. what will you bring to the king? It's good. It's See, good. Jesus came and we celebrate that. But when I was packing up shoes to give to Hearts for Soul, I wasn't really conscious of that to the fact that I'm giving to Jesus. Mm. I was thinking I'm giving. There are people. There are my people, you know, in Liberia. Let's right. do this. When we were giving yesterday at Hope's door, I wasn't thinking, oh, I'm giving to Jesus. I know the scripture says, whatever you do for the least of these, you do it unto me. Right. I was just thinking, I'm going to give shoes that I have. I'm going to sew shoes and I'm going to give products that I can give to help someone else. But I asked myself this question. Mm. Okay, Wendy, what will you give to Jesus? Mm. What is going to be my focus intent on him mm. this Christmas? Mm. And so I didn't want to get all deep or make theology out of something that wasn't necessary. But mm. I had to go to the scripture and look at this giving of gifts when I asked myself the question. So we are going to start off in Matthew, the second chapter, Matthew 2. We're going to read verse 1 and then we're going to skip down to verses 10 and 11. I'm reading from the NIV version. It says in Matthew 2, verse 1, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Mm. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and mm. presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's good. What I noticed about this story is it has taken some time for the Magi to get to Jesus. Right, right. Because when the Christmas narrative opens up, we find Mary, Joseph, in the manger, there's mm. no room for them in the inn. Mm -hmm. But I notice here, the Magi said when they saw, his, it, it says in verse 1, we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Mm. It has taken them some time to get there. Right. Notice what it says in verse 10. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On verse In verse 11, it says, on coming to the house. Mm. So Mary Joseph and baby Jesus are no longer in the manger, right. they're at home. Then it says they saw the child with his mother. So Jesus is no longer a baby. Right. And I know some theologians said it took the Magi, once they saw the star, about two years right. uh, to get there. I have no idea, but I know that they are no longer in the manger and Jesus is now a child. He's no longer a baby. And, and one of the blues clues to the text Mm -hmm. It's also uh, Herod inquiring uh, when the star appeared. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, surrounding the birth of Jesus, there was this mass infanticide, right? Where mm -hmm. all these children, two years yes. old and under, were massacred mm -hmm. because Herod thought he would um, uh, 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 snuff out the life of Jesus yes. uh, because he estimated mm -hmm. that the child would have been about two years old. Okay. And, and so that's another reason uh, that, that we, uh, or this text seems to infer uh, that Jesus is no longer the babe in right. the manger. This is no longer that silent night when the shepherds came and worshiped. In fact, most theologi theologians will argue that the traditional nativity scene is inaccurate where you have magi and shepherds and angels in the same scene mm -hmm. because this now is 
two years uh, mm -hmm. past, approximately two years past uh, 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 the, the night that Jesus was born mm -hmm. in Bethlehem. Yes, yes. So that's deep, but <laughs> <laughs> we're unpacking it. Amen. But I love the fact that they didn't just show up. It wasn't enough to just come say, hey, we're so glad you're here. Right. It's that they brought gifts. Good. So I started uh, asking Ray as we were, Pastor Ray, as we were studying this, okay, um, they brought gold, mm -hmm. frankincense, and myrrh. Mm -hmm. And so he began to unpack that with me. But before you start unpacking it, <laughs> I saw this funny uh -huh. meme on Facebook. And so it says the three wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And there's a meme. We'll put it up for you here. It says that the three wiser women brought diapers, formula, and casserole. Come on, somebody. <laughs> All the moms in the audience said... Yes. Amen. Glory yes, to God. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, but these gifts that were brought uh, by the Magi mm. were very significant to the life of Jesus. Yeah. So on the meme, they're inferring, what is this baby going to do with gold, frankincense, <laughs> and myrrh? But this was uh, very significant. It was. Yes. These three gifts were, were, were not only significant, they were very symbolic and prophetic. And let me tell you uh, what these gifts mean uh, as it relates to the life and ministry of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they speak to the span of, of and the scope of Jesus' work. Um, so, so, uh, and, and I, I'm trying to be careful because I'm not trying to be too theological, but uh, the gold represents Christ, our conquering king. Mm. Uh, so it is more of the future ministry of Jesus. Okay. It refers specifically to his second advent. One okay. of the things we celebrate around Christmas is the countdown to Christmas, which we call Advent. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of this preparation where we prepare our hearts a lot like Lent. Yes. When we prepare our hearts for Easter, mm -hmm. Advent prepares our hearts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas is the first Advent or the first appearing of Jesus. But when Jesus returns and splits that Eastern sky, mm -hmm. that is his second Advent. And when Jesus returns, he comes as our conquering, victorious mm -hmm. King, the gold, mm -hmm that was presented to Jesus signifies it represents Jesus. Mm -hmm. This child is our conquering king, mm -hmm. but that speaks to his future ministry at the end of the age. Uh, the second gift was frankincense uh, or the incense which was burned in the temple. It signifies Jesus or symbolizes Jesus, our faithful high priest, which is the present day post resurrection ministry of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture says in Hebrews 7, and I believe it's verse 25, mm -hmm. that Jesus ever lives to make intercession on our behalf. Yes. What is Jesus doing right now for you and for me? Jesus is standing in the gap as a faithful mediator and intercessor praying for you and for me, just as the Old Testament high priest stood as an advocate and a mediator between God and and the people. That's what the incense represents. This child that they worshiped yes. is going to be our faithful high priest. And that's why the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4 that we do not have a high priest who is not touched, right? Who can we have a high priest who can sympathize with our shortcomings and our struggles and our infirmities, right? Yes. Because he was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, it's scripture says we can boldly come to his throne of grace and find grace to help and obtain mercy in our time of need. The frankincense represents Jesus, our faithful high priest. And here's the third gift, the myrrh. Uh, the myrrh is just, I shouldn't say it's just, because the myrrh signifies the past ministry of Jesus when he walked the earth as our suffering savior. That's one of the reasons in Exodus uh, chapter 12, mm -hmm. on the night of the Passover, the Passover lamb was rubbed down in bitter herbs because it signifies the bitter death, the substitutionary death that Jesus would die wow. on behalf mm -hmm. of all humankind. So the gold, frankincense, and myrrh uh, are extremely symbolic and prophetic. They speak of the past, present, and future ministry of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, past yes. 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Jesus, our faithful high priest, present day. He ever lives to make intercession. Yes. And then the gold, Jesus, our conquering king, which will, which will come to a culmination at the end of the age. Amen.
You go. Uh, <laughs> I need to reach for my wallet and give an offering. Oh, come no, on. thank you. Thank you for that. Thank Amen. you for that, baby. That that It's breakdown. the riches of God's word. Yes, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. It is. And I love how you present it and I love how you love the word. Amen. But when we look at giving gifts, I really like the intentionality. Mm. So we, you know, laughed a few minutes ago about, you know, them bringing a child, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mm. And I know it's repeated in the narrative of Jesus' birth. And even through mm. uh, the time he was 12 years old, that when these events would happen, it says, and Mary quietly hid these things in her mm. heart. So as his mother, as the chosen one to birth the Messiah, she was watching all of this mm. and wondering, you know, what is he going to do? How is God going to use him? Wow. And I love wow. the intentionality about the gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that has been a tradition in our home, you have been very intentional about Christmas gifts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you tied it to Bible or what we've not discussed this, but I know uh, Pastor Ray has always been intentional with our family, me specifically, to give a gift um, that is a spirit, soul, and body. Mm. So whether he gets me a Bible that I want or gets me tickets to a women's conference, he gets me something to feed my spirit. Um, my soul, which has to do with your mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. He may get me a book. He may get me a, a book on CD, an audio book, or something that will just feed me. It'll be something just for me. And then body. It has been jewelry or massages or one thing that I love every year. He has gotten me uh, socks, a specific <laughs> kind of socks. Right. And um, you love your warm feet, baby. Yes, I, I love warm <laughs> socks. And so he has them ordered and shipped. Yeah. They don't do very well with hiding the box. I just always pretend that <laughs> I don't see the box coming in. But he gets me something. And so I love that that mm. intentional aspect uh, that we see how God was intentional. Yes, he was. Um, in giving us Jesus. The Magi were intentional in their worship and what they brought. Mm. And I too it's want good. to be intentional, not just this Christmas season and making sure I check everyone off my list that I get something for them, but I want to be intentional mm. about what I bring That's to good. Jesus. And so I ask you, what will you bring? Mm. I'm asking myself, what am I going to bring? Mm. One of my favorite, favorite parts of Christmas um, is the song, Little Drummer Boy. Mm, I yeah. think second to the birth of Jesus, this song has so much meaning to me. And as I'm thinking mm. about, okay, framing my, my words, this Christmas will be, but I want to be intentional. I don't want to leave Christ out of Christmas Right, right. for right. me, for my life. And I, mm. I hope you're encouraged by this. Now, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm going to read the lyrics to the Little Drummer Boy. I'm not going to do the rumpa pum pum. <laughs> I'm just going to read it to you almost in poem yeah. form. Right. Um, and I'll leave out the rumpa pum pums, but you can look it up too. And it's the remix. Come on, yes, somebody. Yes, you can rumpa pum pum at home. But I love this. When we think about what can we bring to Jesus, it's nothing deep or spiritual. Um, some people may give an offering. Some people may say, you know what? I'm going to serve at my church after mm. all this time they've been asking me and I've kept saying no. Some people may uh, decide to reconcile a relationship mm. and do the God thing to forgive mm. um, someone or to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. But I love this display. Uh, so the good. Little Drummer Boy, it is, it's not scripture. It is a song that was written by someone, but let's look at the words. It says, come, they told me, a newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring to lay before the king, mm. to honor him mm. when we come. Little baby, I am a poor boy too. Wow. wow. I have no gift to bring mm. that's fit to give our king. Mm. Shall I play for you? Mm. Mary nodded. The ox and lamb kept time. I played my drum. Mm. I played my best for him. Mm. So good. 
Then he smiled at me. Mm. Come, they told me, a newborn king to see me and my drum. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this was so precious to me. Mm. And even when I was reading it to Pastor Ray, I cried and I'm fighting she tears did. back now. And I don't know why. I don't know why this song has always been very emotional for me. Mm. I don't know what it means. Even when I cried after I uh, read it in poem form to Pastor Ray, I asked the Lord, I said, what does this mean? What is this doing to me? I don't have any answer, but mm. I'll just continue to choke back the tears. Mm. But I... I, I may find myself here. Maybe that's what it is. And I'm not going to try to make it something that it isn't. Mm. But it says, uh, here, the song starts mm. out. It says, come, they told me. Mm. That is such a picture of evangelism. Yeah. Someone is inviting, inviting people to church, inviting people to pray with them. It says, mm. come, they told me. A newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring. Mm. Have you ever been around people that seem like they have it going on financially and you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm not there. Mm. And you feel a little left out. Right. And I see right. the little drummer boy. They, you know, He's surrounded by people that are going to give their best. The Magi, they were able to give gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yeah. And so even in coming, I see where there's a part of him that is shrinking back. Yeah. Those that yeah. could do, they want to go and honor and bring their best. And that's how all of us should be when we come to Jesus. Mm. But what about those of us who don't have the gold, yeah. frankincense and myrrh? Wow. Is there room for me? So good. And there is. I love this little drummer boy. He says, little baby, I am a poor boy my, too. My. That's the line that gets me every yes. time. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because mm. he sees Jesus in the mm. manger. Mm. No room for it. And in, his mom didn't even have a blanket. It says mm. that it was strips of cloth that right. Mary wrapped him in. And this little boy was able to identify with him. Mm. So for those who had the most, the gold, to bring everything to gifts. bring, yeah. they were so excited and they went and worshiped him. But I love the humility mm. of God in his decision mm to place Christ the way he did yeah. because a little drummer boy felt like he had a place too. Mm. He said, uh, shall I play for you? Mm. And he didn't have anything to bring but this gift. That's so good. I can play. He said, shall I play for you? Mm. And I love the fact, it says Mary nodded mm -hmm. <laughs> and the it. lamb and ox kept time. Come on. That to me speaks of anointing. Yeah. Like the presence of 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 a holy time. Mm. This is not scripture. Mm. It's just painting a picture for me and I love this song. It says, "I played my best for him." Ah, uh, so good. <laughs> and it Yay! goes on, then he smiled at me. Mhm. Mm Could it be? Mm. That Jesus it's not scripture, mm. but could it be the writer of this song? Mm. It wasn't the fact that the boy played the drum, mm. but that the boy showed up. Yeah, come on. That even through his insecurity, mm. he still showed up. So good. And I think that when we think this Christmas, when we ask, what will you bring? Mm. I think that you'll just make Jesus smile mm. by showing up. Yeah. You can get somewhere by yourself in a room, if you're not there yet, get with a friend and just tell Jesus, thank you. Mm. If that's all mm. you have to bring to him, I mean, we're not gonna bring gold and frankincense and murray, he's not gonna receive it up in heaven. Mm. But I think the posture of our heart, that even through the picture of insecurity that this little drummer boy had, yeah. he still showed up mm. and he gave what he had to give. So you good. know, when we were uh, preparing for this, I've thought about so many people mm. and all of the things that people are going through. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, what if all you have is a lap soaked with tears? Come on. That's all you have to bring to the king. Mm. What if you've just got a this full of disappointment and a broken mm. heart. Come on. But you say, you know what, God, I'm just going to give this to you. Mm. I don't think it's his love for us is even in the exchange. Mm. I think it's that we come to him. Yeah. Yeah. That we just show up for him. Mm. So when I ask myself, Wendy, what will you bring? Mm. 
this Christmas, this Christmas, what will you bring? And I am just going to bring all of me. So good. And I'm going to lay it bare before him. Mm. And my prayer is, God, I'm still here. Mm. So you're not done with me. So good. Even though I don't have every single step mapped out in my mind or my passion planner, mm. but I am going to show up. And not just show up as church leadership or show up as Pastor Ray's wife. I am going to show up as Wendy. Mm. And I will do my best for him. Mm. And what does that look like? That means for me, keeping a happy heart. That means watching my words. That means giving. Mm. That means being satisfied mm. and complete exactly where I am. So good. For me, that means just being grateful, just counting my blessings one by one. Mm. What will you That's bring so good. to the Lord? Yeah. yeah. And so I encourage you to read that song. And I encourage you to invite someone this Christmas, invite someone to watch online who may not go to church or who may feel disconnected because mm. we aren't meeting corporately. Mm. Be the invitation for someone. Yeah. Extend the invitation, not mm. be the invitation. Extend an invitation, just like the little drummer boy. Come, they told me. Mm. Invite somebody. Wow, wow. Can I, can I just yes, jump in absolutely. right there, Pastor Wendy? Because as you're ministering, it, it, it's... I'm holding back the tears as well mm -hmm. because I see myself in that in that place with the little drummer board mm -hmm. where you're almost second guessing yourself and yes. saying, what do I have of worth to mm -hmm. bring to this king? Yes. You know, I think of, of Tamala Mann's song, yes. uh, Take Me to the King. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't much, have much to bring. To bring. And, and sometimes we feel that way. And I'm sitting here and as you're reading the lyrics to the song, I'm thinking to myself, how good was this if he was a little drummer boy? How good was he to even begin with? Yes. Maybe he said, man, I just got this drum and I'm learning how to play and keep time. I'm not really proficient, but that's all I have. Yes. That's all I have to bring. I don't have, you know, my finest gifts to bring, but I do have this drum and, and I'm learning how to play in, in, in tempo and on time and is it even enough? Is this a gift that would, would honor you? And I yes. think sometimes we feel that way because we say to ourselves, I don't have much to bring. Yes. And, and yes. so I, one of the things that Pastor Wendy and I talked about is, is maybe asking ourselves, uh, man, this Christmas, what's my drum? Yes. Like this little boy. Yes. You may not have everything everyone else has to bring. Right. But you've got a drum. Mm hmm and you may say, well, I, I don't know, your drum may not look like mine. Right, right. But we all have something mm -hmm. we can bring to the king. Mm -hmm. You may think it's insignificant. You may think it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But notice what happens when this boy starts to play for his king. Yeah. Mary nodded. Mm -hmm. The lamb and ox kept time. <laughs> and listen, Jesus smiled at him. Mm. What if this Christmas... When you bring what you have, when you bring all that you have, yes. no matter how seemingly insignificant it is, mm -hmm. that Jesus smiles at you with approval. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Pastor Wendy and I, uh, uh, we, 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 we haven't looked at each other's lists, and we said, why don't we close the message today? Mm -hmm. and, and when we ask that question, what will you bring? Mm -hmm. Let, let's ask Converge Nation that question. Yes. Uh, uh, what will you bring and, 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 what's, your and, drum? and what's your drum? Mm -hmm. So what will you bring? Your response is, I'll bring my drum. Mm -hmm. But what is your drum? Mm -hmm. So Pastor Wendy made her list. I made my list. It's a simple acronym or acrostic for the word drum, D-R-U-M. Yes. And it may not seem like a whole lot, but we believe as we present these gifts mm -hmm. to our king, mm -hmm that it would please his heart and he'll smile back at us mm -hmm. with his approval. So here we go. I haven't seen Pastor Wendy's list. She hasn't seen mine, but this is where we are this Christmas. And this is what we bring our King in Jesus name. Yes. Pastor Wendy. All right. Here is my drum. Mm. This Christmas, I will bring number one, a decision mm. to respond mm. 
to the invitation. Wow. Come. So good. Yes, I'm saved, but I'm never going to be so saved that I don't need to sit at the feet of Jesus, mm. at the foot of the cross. So my D is a decision, a decision mm. to come, to accept that invitation, to continue to show up. Wow. Just he and I. That's good. With the best that I have. And I think that that line gets to me. I played my best for him. Yeah. And sometimes we don't think that what we have mm. is good enough, mm. but we mm. are enough in him. Mm. My R is, mm. I Oh, will, let me do my D. Oh, you, you do your D. Yeah, let's tag team. I do my let's D, Let's keep you them do in suspense. <laughs> I do my D, you do your D. Hey. 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 All right. <laughs> so, wow, this is such a tender moment. Listen, I'm holding back tears and the floodgates might open here in a second, so bear with me. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. Now, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for being transparent and vulnerable and, uh, and for leading us in this direction. Because I think God is doing something really powerful. He's doing something really profound in your heart, in my mm -hmm. heart. But I think in the hearts of the people as well, as we identify mm -hmm. with, this, with this little drummer board. So, mm -hmm. so here's my D. Uh, um, I bring my dreams. Mm -hmm. I bring my dreams. And, and let me say this. Before I even talk about my dreams, as I was getting ready to make my list, the Lord reminded me of David's prayer in Psalm 51 mm -hmm. and verse 17. It says, and this, these are David's words to God. Doesn't seem like he's bringing a whole lot to his king, but notice what he says. He says, my sacrifice, mm -hmm. my gift to my king, my sacrifice, oh God, yes. is a broken spirit. Mm. A broken and contrite heart, you God will not despise. Yes. And as I was thinking about my list, there was just this brokenness that I kept feeling. And I'm like, you know, I wish I could bring a shiny, you know, uh, uh, crystal, piece of crystal or yeah. diamonds and gold. But, but Lord, I bring you my dreams. Mm -hmm. And here's why I say that. Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2. Uh, and well, mainly the, the B part of verse one and then the A of verse two, it says, and let us run with perseverance, mm -hmm. the race marked out for us, us. fixing our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Yeah. And so as I was thinking, I was like, what, what can I bring my king this Christmas? My dreams mm -hmm. that I can surrender my dreams and what I thought my dreams should look like or produce. You know, I had a moment of transparency and vulnerability with our leadership team, and I said, what if the race that God has already marked out for me is not necessarily to be the pastor of a mega church mm -hmm. that brings in thousands of people? What if the race that is set before me is for me to continue to minister to a church our size yes. and to do it faithfully? Because a lot of times we want to be Usain Bolt. Yeah. We want to run that 100-meter dash that attracts millions mm -hmm. of viewers, right? The, the stands are full mm -hmm. because it is sort of the most coveted gold medal in the entire Olympics, right? Yeah. People want to see who's the fastest man on earth. And God has chosen someone to run that 100-meter dash. What if God says, nah, Ray, I've chosen you to run cross country. Mm. The event that very few people even show up to watch. Wow. And so I want to be like the little drummer boy yeah. to say, God, you know my dreams. Yes. You know what I imagine when I'm alone in bed or yes. when I'm with Pastor Wendy in bed and I'm <laughs> dreaming about what my life should look like. Mm. And what if God says, no, nah, no, nah, you're not going to have that glamorous ministry, mm -hmm. but you're going to have an effective ministry. Mm. And it may not be a ministry that draws and attracts a crowd, mm -hmm. but if you will remain faithful, Ray Harmon, yes. And, 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 and run your race. And that may not be the 100 meter dash. It may not be the 200 meter dash. It may not be the four by 100. It may not be USA basketball that attracts the big crowds, but I have Amen. given you a race and I've said it before you and run that race faithfully. And, yes. and with my broken and contrite heart, yes. I've brought that dream to my king, yes. who is the perfecter and the pioneer of my faith. That's my D. Amen. All of my dreams. Amen. I bring to my king. Amen. Whew. My R is 
I'm going to bring the reminder. Mm, good. And when I say reminder, the when I because I wrote so many words down, but reminder is where I I landed. And what came to me mm. is the little, the simple song, Jesus loves me, this ah, I know. so good. For the Bible tells me so. Mm. Little ones to him belong, they are weak. He is strong, yes, Jesus loves me. Mm. And I've got to remind myself of that no matter what. Because if I don't remind myself of that, it will be very difficult for me to so good. come and sit at his feet. Mm. So my D is a decision to go, to right. come, mm. and my R, I'm committing to the reminder, the mm. reminding myself, Jesus loves mm. me, this I know. Mm. Jesus loves me, this I know. Mm. Not because you said it, mm. not because my mom said it. Mm. Jesus loves me, this I know, mm. for the Bible tells me so. Wow, wow, powerful, powerful. Reminders. Yes. Yeah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and mm. forget not. All his benefits. All his benefits. Wow, powerful. Well, my R is uh, my resources. Mm -hmm. My resources. Amen. And I kept going back to the story of uh, the poor widow yeah. who gave all she had. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Mm -hmm. It says, but a poor widow came and put in two very small, small copper coins mm -hmm. worth only a few cents. So calling to his disciples, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more. Mm. This poor widow with her two mites, with her two copper coins worth only a few cents, has put more into the treasury than all the others. And Jesus says, you see, they gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. And as I was preparing, baby, I just felt this sense in my heart uh, to make that commitment mm -hmm. that what I have may not be much, mm -hmm. but it can multiply by his touch. Yes. And what I have may not be much, but I will still bring what I have, even if it's all I have and present it to my king. So what will I bring to my king? I'll bring my dreams and I'll bring my resources, no matter how vast or no matter how seemingly ins insignificant it may seem. Amen, amen. For my you, I landed on unity. Mm. Because I'm going back to the beginning of the song and it says, come, they said. Mm. And so there are so many people mm. outside of my everyday sphere of influence that I can invite to come. So good. And it may not be, they may not ever come to Converge Church. They may not ever uh, show up online, but I can bring a sense of unity mm. by giving someone a smile, mm. by speaking to someone through my mask in the grocery store, mm. by... Um, being more tolerant and instead of putting my opinions mm. on something, praying about it or deciding to look at it from a different perspective. So, so I'm a part of my drum as I am going to revive unity, not just among me and my four and no more, my mm. little corner of people that I love and mm. who love me, but stepping outside of that mm. as I am prompted to and really being intentional about doing my part in this world That's and good. as a part of my community beyond my home and my church family. Wow. Wow. Powerful. All right. We're in the final stretch. This is my you uh, as I bring my drum and my you is I will bring to my king uh, my unmet expectations. Mm. My unmet expectations. I think a better way to put it and I'm holding back the tears, yes. is my disappointments. Mm -hmm. Remember what the psalmist said, Psalm 51. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, a broken and contrite spirit God will not despise. I'm talking to somebody this morning who is wrestling with unmet expectations and life's disappointments. Even those things you can bring to your king. Notice what Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm, yes. That when your hopes are put on layaway, 
when your hopes are delayed and put aside for another time. It said it makes the heart sick. When you've done everything you know to do, you've done all the right things, and still, God, nothing yet? No, the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But notice what it says next. But when the desire comes, when the desire comes, the NIV says a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I just pray for you right now, as I've prayed for me many times, in the midst of disappointment and unmet expectation. Lord, for whatever reason, that hope has been deferred. My heart's grown sick over it. But Lord, I thank you that when that longing is fulfilled, when that desire comes, it will be to me a tree of life. So I bring my unmet expectations and I bring my disappointments to my king this Christmas. Amen. Amen. And play my drum. My M is mobilize. Mm, good. So I don't just want to make a decision. I don't want to remind myself just of what mm. God has done. I don't want to just have unity and just keep it there. I want to mobilize the plan of God in this earth so through good. evangelism, mm. through giving to the poor, mm. uh, through prayer, mm. through excitement and joy that I get to be on this journey mm. called life. No matter what's going on in the news and how crazy things are being, I want to mm. mobilize people to trust God. I want to mobilize people to give and be a part of their community. I want to mobilize hope in people so that all we see is not all there is. Mm. That there Come is so much, so much more. more. Mm. So this Christmas, mm. the drum I bring to Jesus mm. is my decision, mm. my reminders, mm. my unity, mm. and the desire to mobilize those wow. around me. Wow, powerful, powerful. All right, here we go. Psalm 51, verse 17. A broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. My M mm -hmm. is my mistakes. Mm -hmm. My M is my mistakes. I think one of the biggest things or the hardest things for any leader to mm -hmm. own up to is, is their mistakes and their missteps, the things they did wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a leader in scripture, his name is Paul. He had this huge falling out with his traveling companion, his fellow itinerant minister, mm -hmm. Barnabas. Mm -hmm. Barnabas, the name means encourager. Yeah. So they had this huge dispute, this falling out over a young man named John Mark. Uh, Paul thinks John Mark is too feeble for the rigor of ministry. And Barnabas is saying, no, let's bring John Mark. Paul's saying, no, don't bring him with me. The dude is useless. He can't hang. At the end of Paul's life, notice his words in 2 Timothy. He says, only Luke is with me. <laughs> I have discovered that sometimes God does his best work in isolation. Mm. When the crowd fades and you're left alone with God, he's in this place where he's alone and the only person with him is Luke. And he has this moment of clarity. And this is what he says. He says, get Mark. Mark who I wrote off. Mark who I said was good for nothing. Mark who I said just wasn't made for ministry. He said, go get Mark because I was wrong about him. I was wrong about what I thought about him. I was wrong about what I said about him. I was wrong about my decision to go the other way. And he says, because he is helpful. One translation says, because he is profitable to me mm -hmm. in my ministry. So what will I bring to my king? I'll bring my drum. And what is my drum? My drum this Christmas is my dreams, my resources, the unmet expectations and disappointments, and my own mistakes. And our prayer, our prayer is that the Lord will look back as we lay these gifts at his feet with a smile and a nod of approval. Because again, Psalm 51 and verse 17 reminds us 
My sacrifice, oh God, mm. my gift, oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Pastor Wendy. Amen. So we thank you. <laughs> um, I would apologize for the tears, but hey, mm -mm. we're just going to let the, the spirit move. Again, we thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. And I would um, be remiss if I didn't extend an invitation to yeah. you. Uh, some of you, you may be, you maybe you haven't been going to church. Maybe you, you feel far off from God. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to pray a simple prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to join me and just, just come. I say, come, mm -hmm. come just join us as we all bring. There's so many things that, uh, that all of us could turn that drum into. Mm -hmm. We encourage you this week just to, to, to get a, a journal or a piece of paper or even in your phone and just put D R U M. Good. And what is it that you're going to bring the Lord? Mm -hmm. What is it that you can fill in those spaces, that acronym that you can turn over to God? But for those of you who may feel like, you know, I've been far away from God and um, you may not have had anybody to pray with you. We want to extend an invitation for you to just ask Jesus to come and, and, and be with you, to be the Lord of your life. Uh, if that's you today, Pastor Ray and I are going to pray and I'm going to you can just repeat after me. Mm. If you find yourself where you think, you know what, I want to get connected. I want to accept the invitation to come. So good. Let us pray. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you now. I come to you now. I ask you. I ask you. To forgive me. To forgive me. Of my sin. Of my sin. Those times. Those times. When I've missed the mark. When I've missed the mark. I acknowledge you, Jesus. I acknowledge you, Jesus. As the Son of God. As the Son of God. Who came as a baby. Who came as a baby. Who grew up to be a man. Who grew up to be a man. He went to the cross. He went to the cross. Died. Died. And rose again. And rose again. For me. For me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. To accept. To accept. And recognize. And recognize. Your love for me. Your love for me. Help me. Help me. To walk out my days. To walk out my days. That you have a sign. That you have a sign. For me to walk. For me to walk. Keep me, Jesus. Keep me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I ask you now. I ask you now. To be the Lord and Savior. To be the Lord and Savior. Of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you pray Amen. that prayer with us this morning, Amen. there is rejoicing yeah. going on in heaven. If you've prayed that prayer, it says that your name is written in the book of life. Yes, it is. And you can't do anything for it to be erased. Come on. If you prayed that prayer and you don't have a, a local home church, please send us, a, a, you can give us a call. The number will show up on the screen. Or you can send us an, an email at info at converge, weareconverge.com. Mm. It'll be on the screen. Info at weareconverge.com. You can send us a, a direct message on Facebook or even on Instagram if you pray that prayer. We yeah. want to send you some resources and we want to celebrate mm -hmm. with you in the decision that you've made for Jesus. Mm. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We love you so much, Converge. We miss seeing you in person, but we thank you for connecting here. Amen. And we will see you next week. God bless you, love you, and we'll see you next week. Merry Christmas. If you were impacted by today's message, we would love to hear from you. Maybe today's sermon was exactly what you needed to hear, or you prayed the prayer of salvation for the first time. If so, we would love to send you some information to help you kickstart your relationship with God. Or if you want more information on how to join our virtual family, email us at info at weareconverged.com. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so online safely and securely at www.weareconverged.com slash give. You can also text 77977, type in Converge Give in the dollar amount. You can also find all of this information on our mobile app. Simply open your app or Play Store, search Converge Church Plano, and download the app. It's that easy. 
Thank you again for joining us for today's worship experience. We look forward to staying connected with you.